Hello everyone, I welcome you all to my YouTube channel, Aptitude Ninja by Saurav Kulara. So today we are going to start off with a very important topic from the perspective of any placement examination. Uh, the name of topic is set theory. Now before I start this topic, I want to uh, set the agenda. The agenda is we have to only cover these two types of problems. Because as far as any placement examination is concerned, you will find these two typical types of problems. You will find problems based on two variables and problems based on three variables. So let us start the session. Now before I begin with question, there are some fundamental things which we have to understand or and for that, what I have done, I have picked an example for you. So using this example, we will try to understand the basic concept. So here you would see there are two uh, sets. The first set is representing number of students who have opted for physics and the other set is representing number of students who have opted for chemistry. And if you look at these uh, numbers, what 60 and 80 is representing, 60 are the number of students who have opted for subject physics and 80 are the number of students who have opted for chemistry. And then what 20 represents, 20 is in the intersection region, it means uh, these are those students who have opted for both the subjects, physics and chemistry. I hope this much is understood. If you look at the un value of universal set, this 150 is actually representing the total number of students who are there in a classroom. So the situation is like there are total 150 students and these 150 students, some of them have opted for physics, some of them have opted for chemistry and there are some of them who have opted for both. So there is a possibility that there students who have opted subject opt nahi kiya hoga. So we have to figure out everything. So if you look at in the right hand side, you realize I have asked you multiple questions. So we'll try answering these questions by looking at this figure. So before we answer these questions, let us try to find answer of some important regions. So let me call this as area 1, A1. Let's call it A2. And let's call this area as A3. So I can divide this complete thing. In, okay, let me do one more thing. Let me call this outside area as A4. So I have divided this complete figure in four different areas. So if somebody asks you what area 1 is representing, you would say sir area 1 is representing uh, students who have opted for only physics. Who have opted for only physics. So if I ask you how many students have opted for only physics, you would say 60 students have physics ke opt kiya hai. And then if you look at this common intersection region, ye wo students hai ne physics or chemistry dono ke liye opt kiya. So if I remove these 20 students from total 60, you would find the answer for number of students who have opted for only physics. So there are 40 students who have opted for only physics and this is the answer for area 1. So if somebody asks you what is the value of area 1, you would say 40. What is the value of area 3? It is already there in front of us. It is 20. And now let us try to find out the value of area 2. What area 2 is representing? Area 2 is representing number of students who have opted for only chemistry. So how would you uh, calculate this? See, it's very easy again. You will say uh, 80 students belong from this particular set. Out of 80, these are those 20 students who have opted for both the subjects. So if I remove 20 students from total 80, I'll be able to find answer of this region, which happens to be 80 minus 20, 60. So the answer of third or the second area is going to be 60. So there are 60 students who have opted for only subject chemistry, right? Now, if you find the sum of this, right? If you simply find the sum that how many students have opted for at least one of the subjects, you will say 40 plus 20, 60 and 60 plus 60 is going to be 120. So you'll find that these are 120 students. So inside this two circles, the total number of students who have opted for one of the subjects are actually 120. So can you now tell me what will be the value for area 4? What is going to be the value for area 4? You would say total number of students were 150. And there are 120 students who have opted for at least one of the subjects. So if I remove 120 from 150, I would be able to find number of students who have not opted for any of the subjects, right? Now, all you need to do is you have to plug in these values corresponding to the given, you know, whatever question they have asked. So let's read the first question. Number of students opted for only physics. 
only physics it means they want us to find out answer of area 1 because area 1 is representing students who have opted for only physics the value is going to be 40 so the answer of first question is going to be 40 read the next question number of students opted for only chemistry so in this case we'll pick this value because these are the number of students who have only opted for chemistry then read this question number of students who have opted for physics since they haven't used any particular word here any specific word like only or exactly so it means they are asking me total number of students who have opted for physics it's there in front of you it's given in the question these are 60 number of students who have opted for chemistry it means i have to tell you the total since uh, no specific word is mentioned here so i'll say okay total number of students who have opted for chemistry is 80 then read the next question number of students who have opted for chemistry and physics both who have opted for both the subjects now this is very easy i have to pick this value because this is representing number of students who have opted for both the subjects 20 read the second last question number of students who have opted for no subject it means i have to write the answer which belongs to area 4 area 4 is representing students who have not opted for any of the subjects and then it says number of students who have opted for at least one subject now guys you need to be very careful with this what they want you to find is they want you to find students who have opted for at least one subject because when we say at least one try to understand at least means minimum as a student jinhone kam se kam ek subject to choose kiya hoga so dekho yahan pe kya kya situations nikal ke aayengi it means i am going to consider students who have opted for only physics only chemistry as well as i'll also include students who have opted for both the subjects so if you try to plug in the values of students who have opted for only physics only physics are see these are the students 40 right 40 here only chemistry look at the figure only chemistry are 60 and then both these are 20 so if you try to answer this question this happens to be 120 so there are 120 students who have opted for at least one of the subject and then we get to know achha, there are total 150 students there are 120 students who have opted for at least one of the subjects it means there are 30 students who have not opted for any of the subjects i hope i'm making some sense here now you might be thinking sir is there any mathematical way to answer this question yes there is a mathematical way but my suggestion would be to try answering these questions by using this logical approach or rather i should say by looking at the diagram because when i solve these questions looking at the diagram it becomes very easy for me and you would understand when i start solving the questions for you but for now let me give you a mathematical intuition for the same thing so let's say i want to find out uh, the number of students who have passed in at least one subject it means i want you to calculate c union c so how would you represent this number of students who have opted for physics plus number of students who have opted for chemistry and then you'll subtract the intersection of these two region let me tell you how did i get this mathematical intuition so when i'm saying np it means i'm talking about students who have opted for physics not only physics i'm talking about all the students who have opted for physics so agar main sare physics wale students ko count karunga try to understand this so main area 1 and area 3 ko add kar raha hu what i'm doing i'm adding area 1 as well as area 3 then if you read the next part i have to write students who have opted for chemistry these are 18 number so when i'm considering 80 i'm actually considering these two areas area 2 and area 3 now what i want you to realize when I'm adding students opted for physics and chemistry, I'm actually adding, try to understand, I'm actually adding this area 3 twice. Can you see that? So to make it correct, what I do, I'll remove this area once. And this area is called as the intersection area. And that's why we need to remove this intersection region once. So I hope now you have understood what is the mathematical intuition behind this formula a union b so let me give you a generalized formula that would make more sense to you 
so how would we calculate a union b calculate a union b we add a and b and then we subtract a intersection so this is how you know we deal with two variables situation mathematically but my suggestion would be to solve the equation using this logical approach in logical approach what we do hum pure figure ko alag alag areas mein divide kar lete hain and then it becomes very easy for me to answer the question now after understanding how to deal with two variable questions let me show you a setup where i have picked three variables so here the situation is like there are total three different subjects so students have opted for these three subjects physics chemistry and mathematics and then what i have done i have divided this complete figure in different areas a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 a7 and a8 so uh, before i tell you what are, what are the meaning of these areas i want you to answer this question on your own so you may pause the video for now and then you can listen to what the particular area means all right i hope you have done the work in this figure if i ask you what a1 is representing you will say sir a1 is representing students who have opted for only physics i'm not writing the complete thing i'll just write down the important keywords what area 2 is representing you will say sir area 2 is representing students who have only opted for chemistry then what area 3 is representing see this is very similar say sir area 3 is representing students who have only opted for mathematics now let's see what area 4 is representing now this is going to be very crucial so agar tum area 4 ko dhyan se dekhoge okay to tumhe aisa lag sakta hai ki area 4 humko wo students dikha raha hai which have opted for physics and chemistry both but this is not the correct answer the correct answer is area 4 is representing students who have opted for physics and mathematics only who have only opted for so let me write it for you these are students who have only opted for mathematics and physics likewise if i ask you what area 5 is representing you would say sir area 5 is representing students who have only opted for see this thing carefully this is area 5 physics and chemistry physics and chemistry then what is area 6 is representing you would say area 6 is representing students who have only opted for chemistry and mathematics uh, another meaning of area 4 area 5 or area 6 could be tum aisa bhi bol sakte ho ki sir area 4 wo students ko kar raha hai jinhone physics aur mathematics opt kiya hai but not chemistry area 5 is representing students who have opted for physics and chemistry but not mathematics area 6 is representing students who have opted for chemistry and mathematics but not physics this could be another meaning right now let's see what area 7 is representing area 7 is representing students who have opted for all the three subjects mathematics physics and chemistry and can you tell me what area 8 is representing in the figure you will say sir this is the outside area so area 8 is representing students who have not opted who have not opted for any of the subject so i hope through this example you were able to understand how we are dividing area and what a particular area means also if tomorrow they ask you please look at the diagram agar kal ko tumse puchte hain ki acha ye batao ki wo kaun sa part hai which is representing students opted for physics and chemistry try to understand this students who have opted for physics and chemistry so you won't say this is only represented using area 5 no this would be wrong we try to see this thing carefully area 5 is representing students who have opted for only physics and chemistry but they haven't used word only here iska matlab jab wo tumse physics and chemistry pooch rahe hain tumhe ye complete area dekhna hai ye complete area aur ye complete area kya hai a5 plus a7 i hope i'm making some sense likewise if they ask you to fetch out students who have opted for physics and mathematics physics 
and mathematics and they have been used only again so you would say the answer of this question is going to be this complete region see this region carefully physics and mathematics this complete region this region so to fetch out this region i have to add the value of two areas not a5 it's going to be a4 and a7 likewise they can ask you students who have opted for maths and chemistry for that again you need to fetch out a6 and a7 so i hope through this explanation you were able to understand how to handle a situation where more than two variables are given to you or rather i should say where three variables are given to you so these are the two typical you know problems which could be asked in topic set theory problem based on two variables and problem based on three variables so i think we shall stop at this point because we have discussed multiple things if i continue with the session it will be a lengthy session then so let's close the session here in the next video lecture i'll show you how to attempt problems based on set theory based on both the types if you have enjoyed the session please like share and subscribe thank you and have a nice day